some air bubbles in this one. Even the sound's different. Like you gotta squeak here. Smooth. So I mean, feel, that feels good. That's 60 weight. That's um, that should. I'm, I'm excited to get this on the truck. I wish I would have left a set on and had the truck assembled just so I could see the difference. But I'm gonna know right away once we put this on how the ride height is, when you push it down and bring it back up, you know, it still sags a little bit. And we still got a little bit of adjustment here on the spring, but I don't think we'll, I don't think we'll need much. So far as three shocks that have only been about three quarters of the way full. I don't even know if I don't even know if that's that. I mean, I got four shocks, and I'm probably not even gonna fill this Gatorade cap up. In no way, that's gonna bottom out. Just filled the Gatorade lid. If you want to take the time to let these things turn upside down and drip completely out and get every drop of old oil out, by all means, go ahead with your time. I don't have that kind of time, so you know I've dumped them, just pushed them a bunch of times, cleaned out the end as best as I can get them with my pinky. Good enough for me, so that's what I'm doing. Plus, it's getting late and I am getting tired of standing here. Alright, so we got all four shocks done, upgraded 60 weight oil, and feeling much better. So we're ready pretty much to get this thing back together now. Alright guys, I got everything laid out, ready to go back together. Trick is just kind of hoping I can remember what screws go where, but uh, this first time I've had this truck apart, I'm sure it's pretty cut and dry though. I've I have some kind of system here, even though if it doesn't look like it. But, alright, um, yeah, make sure uh, if you're putting in the center diff, whatever order you're putting yours back together in, if you did it all at once, that once the center diff's in, you're going to have to, um, you know, don't don't mount this without the drive shaft and put this in first. You know, some people might want to do that. It's going to make it a hell of a lot easier than trying to wedge this in with the center diff as it goes down if you put this end on last. So I'm going to start with the front as well. Um, and work my way back. Alright, well, what I'm going to do at this part is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to make one of these T-bones I have for a different vehicle fit here. I just got to drill a couple holes and this is going to work for me now. And then I'll probably upgrade it later down the road with the one that's actually going to be made for it but um, I brought it out just happened to fit so I'm at least going to see what it looks like I'm not positive so this is something I'm kind of throwing in here at the last minute but it's going to alter me putting the screws basically in here so for now um, I'm I may or may not leave this part in with the t-bone you may just all of a sudden see the t-bone pop up and I might reference it again just depends on how long this video winds up getting but uh, I'm going to stop real quick and pop this back off because I want this bumper off. Alright, so with a little work I was actually able to get that to work with the bar style one. It is not perfect and probably everybody will want to wait till the, the other ones come out. But these holes just don't align exactly because I guess I'm guessing the diff housing is just a little bit different on the bottom. So these needed to be widened a little bit and then taken up at an angle. So it was really hard to, thought I had everything lined up until I did this one. Of course, you know, it wasn't, so I had to redo it. So 
these two I got in there pretty good. These two are in there really good. These are in. This one's in good. This one's a little bit holding, but good enough for what I wanted for, at least until the real one comes out. And just really want to see it, kind of get a visual to make sure that's the one I want them to make, or if I want to make the basher regular style. So um, had to do some adjustments as well up here, just in case anybody's seeing this and wants to do it before it's available. It's a Terramoto 10 one with the T uh, double bar. Had to lower this here. The holes were originally here, but since that buffer is different, I had to lower that down just to make it work. So I had to put a little bit longer screws here. Um, did the, the holes, basically just moved them all back, all the way up against this. This is resting on that end piece. And it's, I mean, it's a pretty, pretty decent setup. The difference with this is that buffer piece that comes down that attaches to the chassis is in the way. So this can't go all the way back. So there's still enough, plenty of room there. You know, I, I didn't break through. I'm right up against the edge there. There's still a little bit of room. But that's going to go up against it anyway. That thing's just, I mean, I can't explain how solid that thing feels right now. So I'm looking forward to having that on there and seeing what it looks like all together. So, but again, let's get back to where we're at. Um, I did, the only thing I've done was, sorry, I keep trying to make sure these don't come out. Just put this screw in in addition to that. So that's it. These are the only two that you really have to lock tight. The other two go into plastic, so you won't need to do that. But one thing you will have to remember is when you're tightening this down, if it starts to feel like it's not locking in, you do have another screw on the bottom with that post that might turn. Sometimes all that holds up nice and tight, and you can just tighten this down perfectly without going too crazy, but sometimes it needs to be held. Solid. Yeah, they're good. So I lucked out. All right, so that's secure now. Now we got our spur. This goes in this way first. And now don't forget again to put your dog bone in. going off the wear I never really looked to see where I took it. it looks like it's these two for the motor but I'm curious as to what these are I'm, I'm thinking it's for a bigger motor all right because I've been looking at this let me see if I can get this in there so this one and this one are the main ones I believe because they're the ones that look like they were used I think that's what that motor went into now this one mounts up here, which would be pushing it further up off of that platform that sits here. So I'm thinking that might be for a bigger motor. Because you would put it here on one end, and then you could either angle it here or here, depending on if you were going with like a probably a 40 can versus a 42 can. So I might just try it out just to see what happens real quick and see see what it looks like because uh, you know it's got that platform piece right here so that might avoid this even having to be adjusted to make a bigger motor fit so we'll see guys I think that's what that is I think that's it now that I'm looking at this, even when I go back to the other pinion, or even when I go back to the other motor, this is going to go in this hole, this is going to go in that hole, but there's no adjustment. So I've already dropped a tooth here. I'm going to have to find here. 
I'm going to have to find the matching, kind of like the Terramoto 10, the matching pinion because of this adjustment. And I'm sure each one of these has an adjustment. So I might have to break out some pinions and start putting these on before I get too far ahead of myself. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to stop this and uh, play around with this at this particular point. And then I'll pick up here where I left off. And once I figure out the solution and things, I'll, I'll address it then. So I'll try a couple different things out. So, I mean, it fits, guys. Uh, a couple things I'm curious about. I mean, I have this mesh right now. I have my little bit of rock at times. But then other times it feels a little tight. Now, I've looked. The rotation looks good on it. But I, mean, I got nice rock right here. Like right here, it's just a little tight. Now, I don't know if that's because it's pressing on it too much. Like this might need to be shaved just a hair. I mean, the motor looks pretty flat. But I think, like, it probably could be taken off here and just, like, just kind of shaved down just a little bit. And it would probably be that much better. So, and again, I don't have this motor tightened all the way down yet on here either. I just kind of threw this on. So this is an 18 tooth, though, that has to mesh with this 46 tooth spur. It, it's predetermined. So I guess if I want to drop this down one more hole, I could probably get the 16 on, which I might go for. Uh, if I'm going to try it at least. But now that I know that this setup will work... Um, Oh, you know what? I won't be able to get that one. I won't go. I won't be able to go lower because going lower is going to it's going to involve this having to get closer. So I would definitely have to shave it if I wanted the 16 to fit. So it looks like these might be just different adjustments for the 36 can, but the fact that it allows it to fit is is a bonus as well. So. I'm going to run it this way because I'm, I have a steel spur coming in anyway. So if I eat this spur up, it's not the end of the world. Uh, you know, pop it on, pop it off, and get it back running again. But yeah, man, that's um, that's what we're going to do. We're going to run the 2200 on 4S on it for a little bit. Check it out. Maybe try it on 6S after we get the steel spur on, or maybe after I get the steel spur at least in. So that way, once I destroy it, I can <laughs> replace it. But yeah, man, I'm going to go ahead and finish uh, tightening all this up, get the motor mount tightened back down. I'm right on there. Since it's barely rubbing, I think what I'll do is I'll probably take my Dremel. I'll do this later. I'll leave it exposed for right now, I guess. But I'm just going to take my Dremel and shave this down a little bit. Because it literally is just sitting on that spur right now. Or that pinion. I can feel it when I move this. I can feel it in here, I mean. So it's just sitting just gently on there. I'll take care of that, though. It's going to plug in perfectly right there. Hopefully the Max 8 fits inside of that box though. That's what we'll find out. Alright man, we're almost back together. It took a little longer and a little bit more involved than I wanted to be, but... Maybe be better off for everybody. Way earlier in the 6S testing than I wanted to. Not that I'm going to go test it on 6S yet, but soon. Even on a 2200, I mean, we're upping, we're upping it from a. 
36 can to a 42, which is, is it a true 42? Might be the fins that make it 42. Yeah, so it's a 40 can. So you get four more millimeter can, same length, and 2200 kV versus 19. So it's going to have a nice little boost just for being, you know, 4S. And then, like I said, we might get some nice punch out of this thing on 6S. I got the shocks left. So, yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll probably finish this video up with the shocks going on and just kind of getting it back together. And, of course, I'll do what I got to do with all this stuff. So, let's get these things mounted. It's got a really... It's got a really flat suspension stock, which I like because that's what I did to my Terramoto 10. But it's got um, it's handling. I mean, the handling on it is awesome because of that. It's really noticeable when you're cutting it and turning it and all. But that's, um, you know, the tires help it bash. I guess they raise it back up. That's something I did notice out the box. I don't know if I mentioned it on the unboxing video or not, just how flat that is. But I'm noticing it again as I'm... <laughs> Just comparing the front and rear, that's why I brought it up. That's pretty much it for the rebuild, man. We're back together. So, let's get some tires on here and uh, see what kind of recoil we get out of these shocks. Alright, so I can't leave anything alone and I didn't want to wait. So I went ahead and popped out a Max 8 and got it all hooked up. Made sure it was my motor was running the right way and everything else. So it is in, it's all ready to go. Uh, I just want to show a couple things. I did pull it and let the let the rotation go to make sure that it wasn't grinding or binding here. So I am about to trim this down just to make sure that I can put my cap on. Especially with this lane in there, I don't want that to get caught up in the gears. And uh, I mean, I, I just pulling the trigger on 4S, man. It was I, I could I could feel the truck want to jump out of my hands. But yeah, I set out to just do a little couple minor upgrades, and I wound up practically overhauling this thing. And I didn't really want to do that, but kind of kind of just happened. But um, yeah, so the ESC box, the Max 8, will not fit in there. And Quick Run probably, a Quick Run might fit in this way, the, uh, the, the measurements of the box. But it would probably sit up a little high. Whereas this one, I think, sits up high and it's, it's too fat. So, But it fits perfectly between the screw on this side. So you can actually still put the screw in there to keep that on. And this box kind of like clips down as well. So you get the kind of double coverage. So I mean, it's a decent setup. The body, I mean, the, the, this is not a bad area right here for the ESC. Many vehicles have it up higher than that uh, or right around the same height. I mean, I'm, I'm well under the body mount. Everything should everything should be perfect. I mean, this seems like it. if the gearing is right, it seems like it's going to be a great fit for this truck. I mean, I'm already at a, you know, 18 tooth pinion right now, which is ridiculous in my mind. You know, I want it to be around a 16. But it's not going to fit so to be able to try this setup you know i'll try the 16 once i you know if i can't make this work if the temperatures get too hot i'll try the 16 setup with this which i will have a little more room to play with but right now we're going to test this one out since it's in all right so that's what i'm at now uh, i'm going to go ahead and get my batteries strapped in and um get the body on this thing take a quick peek at it you know with with the bumpers on with the body and uh the tires, I got some IMAX tires on here I'd like to show, so. All right, give me a minute. There we have it. These are the IMAX chrome rims, just like the, the black rims I had on it in the, uh, was it the unboxing video, I think? These, which are probably what I'm gonna be running on mine. They're out of stock on these right now, so I, I want to bring in a couple other um, options but they're the same diameter everything's the same pretty much 
this just has more of an aggressive tread pattern. But I do like these. I think I think this might be more like a you know end up being uh, more like a swamper, and this might end up being more like a trencher. And the reason I say that is uh, for the pro lines, you know, the swampers had a really good off-road tread, uh, didn't handle pavement and concrete and things like that as well. Uh, you know, and this stuff gets shredded down as soon as you start, you know, cutting around the concrete. Whereas these are a little bit more of an all-terrain, hold on a little bit better as far as uh, the grip and things like that. And it's just, it's more of a smooth um, level, level grip. Again, yeah, better off-road, probably better all-terrain right here. Uh, same thing with these. These are um, good on concrete and things like that. Probably not as great off-road uh, as either one of these might be, especially not this one. But again, you got to kind of pick and choose with tires. You know, find a happy medium of where your your normal runs are going to be at. So, you know, I do like these tires as well. But again, not as much as the ones on the other side. And I really like these chrome rims, man, on this truck now too. All right, um, well, we're pretty much done, guys. I just wanted to, you know, I got way more involved into this than I wanted to, and I apologize because, you know, this wasn't supposed to be like this for the last one, and I wound up doing a bunch more stuff in here that I hadn't really planned, uh, but I'm going to keep it in just because it's all part of the, the video that I was making, so. But the shocks, um, I've already kind of tested these out when I put the tires on. I did have to tighten them down. They probably could go down a little bit more. Um... They still don't have as much recoil, and that's a 60, so I don't know if I would go a 70 on this. Um, I, I really don't know at this point. I mean, it's it's definitely better. I mean, I can, I can tell, and I'm pushing it down. I didn't have to push it down nowhere near as, as hard as I am right now uh, to, to make it drop before, but it definitely, um, it'll definitely still go all the way down. Front does too, which it always did but the front's got way more recoil it's definitely got recoil uh, which is there's ride height or the highest height it's only oops sorry it's only not coming up by that much so we're talking like that to that which is not bad same thing there I mean it's not yeah see I I wish I had a side by side again because it's so hard when it's when you're doing it prior but I do I can tell a difference but I just doing it that way doesn't seem like it's that bad because it's really only coming up another hair uh, you know maybe that much well either way man I mean I'm better off than I was stock I got some upgraded oil upgraded differential oils all the way around well the bottom line is I'm better than I was stock so I'm mean, gonna upgraded differential oils I got a smaller spur gear which is definitely not rubbing the battery box battery box but also gives me room to put a little bit larger pinion on and then of course Having the, the 42 cam motor fit on this thing is a plus as well. So we'll, we'll see how that holds up and uh, give you guys another review, probably about another two videos or so after I, unless something happens on the next run, which, you know, brings up something that we'll talk about at the end of that video. So, all right, guys, well, if you have any questions, drop me a comment. If you want one of these for yourself, redcatdealer.com. Got great bundles on there. Check them out. And again, hit me up if you need anything. Thanks, guys.